You're listening to UCW Radio. In your face. What we got here is a failure to communicate. Oh, have I got your attention now? We, for lack of a better word, is good. You know what I mean? Money to be made in a place like this. Money never sleeps, pal. You're crazy. Don't run when you lose. Don't whine when it hurts. You know what it takes to sell real estate? It takes brass, 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 brass. I'm falling, and I can't get up! Alright, welcome to Money Never Sleeps Radio. This is a show where we talk about everything and anything that impacts the flow of money from around the corner to around the world. And I'm excited to be here with you guys. Uh, I've been doing a lot of shows lately with other uh, groups. And Money Never Sleeps, you know, we, again, we, we when we come forward, we, we bring forward thoughts that... Um, and views on what's happening at the moment, uh, big or small, you know, w- whatever the case may be. Uh, what's on tap right now are a few things. Technology, of course, that's the big thing. Um, you have situations that are happening right now as we speak with TikTok and WeChat. Um, the U.S. government is looking to stop them from operating in the U.S. And I, and I understand the why. Uh, it, it's, it's about security, but it's also about leverage. It's about a lot of things. The, the thing that concerns me about that is that when you block out um, other companies from doing, I don't care if it's, if it's TikTok or if, if it's a manufacturing company, when you go and you block them from doing business here in the United States, what winds up, winds up happening is that they block U.S. companies from doing business over there. And China's a big market. Um, there has to be some sort of balance with this. I don't think knocking TikTok out of the equation is the way to go. Uh, the WeChat situation, it, it's its different because WeChat, you know, for all intents and purposes, all right, WeChat is a, it's, it's like a WhatsApp. It's, it's, it's the WhatsApp of the world. Uh, a lot of people in China, that is their only form of communication with their family in the United States, in Europe, and other parts of the world. Uh, knocking that out. Especially when it's an encrypted platform, they really don't take a lot of data from you. Um, I, I think it's going. I think that they're going the wrong route with that. Uh, a lot of companies in China, like McDonald's and other companies, I'm sure Starbucks and other major conglomerates, utilize that as a tool because you know in China you have a lot of digital transactions happening. You know, and they utilize their phone as their bank, as their wallet. Uh, so I think that blocking that could potentially cause uh, some issues. Um, we will see uh, Sunday is the big day when that's supposed to happen. TikTok is a little, is a little further out. Uh, but in my opinion, I think TikTok, uh, you know, look, President Trump is putting putting the pressure down. He laid down the gauntlet, okay, is to get a deal done. He's not, a, he's not about not getting deals done. He lays it out, puts it all on the line, and it's about getting a deal done. So now we have to see what that deal is. My view is it's, it's pretty simple. I see Oracle... Okay, being the the champion here, I see Walmart involved. I saw it prior when Walmart, you know, jumped to the table when Microsoft was involved. But I Walmart, it's it's a no brainer with Walmart. The reason being is that they have retail. They're trying to compete with Amazon. They're trying to do this stuff. So if you have a platform that has a you know, a hundred million, five hundred million, a billion people utilizing it, okay. You have access to all these people. You can advertise to them. No brainer. I see it happening. I see Oracle making the deal. I see, you know, uh, the, the the Chinese government and the China the Chinese company going and making the deal because it makes sense. It, it beats knocking it out of the equation. Uh, my concern with a deal not happening is that it's going to impact U.S. companies. It's going to impact Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, any company. It can, it can affect McDonald's. It can impact you know, any major company that's doing business in China. So this is a slippery slope, people. So we're going to see what's going to happen there. Uh, another thing of note. As of late, you have had, you have a lot of money managers. Uh, they're, they're going into a new game. Hmm. And this is the game. Uh, 
is called the Special Purpose Acquisition Company game. Uh, basically, they're, ra they're, they're, they're creating blank check companies, making them public, raising the capital, and then looking for the acquisition. It's risky uh, as an investor doing something like that because you don't know what they're going to invest in. Okay, uh, it's been it's been doing well so far. I have to tell you that much. Okay, you know from from uh, Virgin Atlantic, or actually Virgin Virgin Galactic. All right, DraftKings and and a few other companies that have um, been. Uh, uh, reverse merged into the the shell company, uh, the, the the public shell company. Uh, they've been successful. They've been successful, and uh, I think that you're going to see more of this happening. I see more and more of it happening every day. You'll see news announcements because you you have you have rates so low now. You have this such an appetite for yield, okay? And if you're not getting the yield, you need the growth. You need something that's gonna that's gonna give you a big punch in the arm when it comes to uh, looking at your numbers quarter by quarter. So when you have, you know, private equity uh, firms, you have uh, pension funds out there. They they need that income because you know they may be taking a hit somewhere else, and they need to go and fill in the gap. And what better way to do that than to have something? That that can you know increase two three times, okay, in a short period of time on paper, okay. That kind of balances your balance sheet. Uh, so we're we're gonna see a lot more uh, happening. I know that one was done. Uh, they they invested a billion dollars into a um, a real estate technology company, um, and the real estate technology company. And again, excuse me, but I the name escapes me. Uh, they're going and. They're basically going and buying homes, okay, uh, throughout the United States. And stuff like that concerns me just a wee bit. Uh, when you go and you throw that much money at a company, a billion dollars at a company to go and execute and go and acquire these homes and, and create the technology to do X, Y, Z, but more so my concern is not the technology, it is acquiring the homes. Uh, when you go and you do that, what winds up happening is that now you you have an unfair advantage. You have people, first-time home homeowners, other people that are looking to buy homes. They're getting priced out of the market. We've seen this in New York, where you had gentrification. You had you have people being priced out of the market. They're forced to move elsewhere because it's more affordable. And little by little, even in the more the more affordable areas, they're becoming not so <laughs> affordable. Because you have the lack of inventory that's happening, and and it's it's a, it's a weird situation because the sales are you, know, you you have foreclosure rates that are going to start creeping up because forbearance is going to start uh, dwindling away. You you have no stimulus package that that's coming forth to help anyone help small businesses and small businesses they have entrepreneurs entrepreneurs that own homes and there you go this is the cycle, okay where the, you know the government needs to come in and help these people. Uh, but when you have these companies that are just sitting on the sidelines, just just waiting to gobble everything up, they're going to price people out of the market. You know, and you have Zillow doing that as well. Okay, they're going in and they're buying homes and they're reselling them. You know, they're, they're flipping homes. And it, again, it's, it's just one of those things that... Um, you know what's home ownership going to be or look like in the next couple of years i'm not sure i'm not sure um but uh well i, I get guess we'll see you know uh, but going back to the SPAC front uh i see a lot more of this happening and i think it's going to be pretty much focused on the techno technology arena i think we're going to see a lot more of it i think we're going to see a lot of um uh, I'm going to say disruptive, disruptive technology coming to the forefront because it makes sense. You you give you give um, you give entrepreneurs that have these great ideas and they're creating the stuff. You give them a little capital, they can make magic. You know, I always say that if you are just you know you if you're going to invest, any investor, okay, um, uh, whether the venture capital end, private equity end, if you're going to invest in a technology company. <laughs> You know, make sure that you're prepared to help them. 
help them with your connections, help them with what you have so that they can go and they can bring it to the level they need to bring it. Okay, so, uh, but, you know, again, we're going to see what is going to happen over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. I think it's going to be an interesting time. I think you're going to see a lot of companies going public, direct listings, and, uh, you know, reverse mergers uh, through, uh, through the SPAC uh, deal. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot more of that happening. Um, and just staying, again, on the technology and the IPO front, uh, you have, it's, it's again, interesting time. Technology is king. The future is technology. We're, we have 5G that's going to be coming upon us. Uh, that's like taking a, a two-lane road and turning it into a 10-lane highway. Things are going to move fast, okay? At some point in time, over time, as smart cities evolve and as all this stuff happens, what you're going to see, you're going to see how people are going to be less dependent on the cables because everything, you know, if, you know data is going to be at lightning speed speed on your phone at home and as connectivity continues you're going to see more of that happening and you're going to see the evolution of quote-unquote cable companies how they're going to evolve uh, and they're going to battle for the 5g even the 6g uh, samsung is talking 6g so you know we'll, we'll see what's we'll, we'll see where that's going to go i think it's going to be interesting a lot of tech companies are going to come to the forefront a lot of tech companies are going to bring disruptive technology to the table Okay, as investors, you know, you need to look and see what's out there. If you are fortunate enough to get involved in these companies uh, on a private level, you know, kudos to you. Uh, most people, they have to wait for them to become public to get involved. And if you if you time it right, it's it should be it, it should it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a bad deal. Okay, you know, Snowflake came public uh, this week, and that's an interesting company. Uh, the CEO, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's taken a few companies public, and he did it this time. Uh, the difference with this, and I, and I, I said it earlier, just a couple of minutes ago, um, the, the the his backers, they're not they're not absentee investors. They get involved. They're helping. They helped him to go and build and and with connections anything that needed to get done to build the company and that's what investors do investors should be doing anyway those that want to be successful you know so you get they have to get involved and they got involved with this and from what i understand uh, a year ago uh prior to them going public the company built up to have a valuation of three billion and that's pretty good Okay, the company went public a few days ago. The company, you know, was valued initially at thirty billion. Before it was all said and done, a couple of days passed by. Okay, the company was worth valued, valued at about fifty, maybe seventy billion. All right, so you see the growth prospects. You see, you know, what could, could what could happen. Um, the one thing that that I need to say is that people look at it, they're like, oh, wow, it's all the hype, it's the company makes no money, so on and so forth. Let me just run through a few things with you. Salesforce, when they were building up, they weren't, they were not profitable for a bit. Okay, Facebook, what had the income, the revenue stream was non-existent. So was Twitter. Okay, and Amazon, they were losing money because they were reinvesting anything they had. So it's it's all about scalability. If you have a company that's scalable, that's being disruptive in an area, you're going to have success if you have peep the right people at the helm. And that's what it comes down to. Okay, another company went public, uh, Unity. You know, they're big in gaming. They have platforms where you can go in and create your games, and they do all this stuff, and they make money from these games. You create a game, you get, you got to pay them. You know that they're, they're like the the they're like the mob for gaming. Okay, you know you do something, you got to give you got to give them a little vig, and that's what that's about. Okay, and again, good company, and I think that they're gonna do fa they're gonna do fantastic over time because gaming, especially with 5G, is gonna be more at the forefront. People that weren't you know uh, gamers may become you know. Passive gamers because now they have the connectivity. They don't have to go and worry about their phone slowing down. Everything's fast, super speed. You're going to see a lot of growth in the uh, private collaboration platforms arena. 
Okay, you have Zoom doing doing things, and look, I, I like what they've done. I believe that things can be done a lot better, and I think other companies are going to come forward with that because it's beyond you know video conferencing. It's beyond that, and, and this is one of the reasons why I I enjoy you know doing things with Megahoot too much because you know uh, it has Vero Hive, which is a private collaboration platform, you know, video conferencing, and so on and so forth. But other things are being integrated into it which is going to make it scalable and it is going to allow people to actually you know grow with it and utilize it f for uh, on a corporate level on an enterprise level on a personal level okay they're going to be able to utilize it because other things are going to be integrated into it and it's going to be very interesting with the things that are going to be happening with that uh you have um you have other other companies like slack and so on and so forth that that provide uh, platforms for the remote uh, work environment. I think you're going to have a big spike in in uh, development and the remote learning field. I think augmented reality is going to be part of the game. Uh, AI is going to be a big part of everything we're going to be doing in, in the coming years. Uh, basically, you know, Things that were going to happen in the next three to five years are happening in the next three to five months. This is the world we live in. This is the post-COVID era. This is the new normal. This is the new reality. This is what we're doing. And this is what's happening because you have to evolve. You know, if anything that we've seen during this period, uh, 2020 has been a, a year of a, a lot of craziness, you know, uh, between the pandemic and between seeing what's what the world becomes when everything comes to a standstill okay we'll, ne we'll never see anything like this in our lives and thank god um it it it's it's enlightening okay um and it's forcing us to change okay you see more you've seen more people spending time with their family spending time you know at, at home they're working from home so they're spending more time with their kids with their dogs and their their fish or whatever they're spending time with and basically you know having a better quality of life you have people knowing uh, companies knowing that hey you can work remotely you know i think uh, facebook and twitter and uh and a few other companies you know um, sent their their employees home they said keep just you know, work at home until next year sometime and, and again that that's just interesting and i think uh, what you're going to see uh you're going to see the likes of facebook and other companies basically basically coming out and creating their own desktop models of of what virtual offices should be you know um i think that we need to look at security uh security is at the forefront privacy is at the forefront my concern when you're dealing with big conglomerates like you know google facebook and companies like that uh, microsoft is that your privacy isn't so private um you know microsoft is again it's it's interesting um when you get a new computer you're forced to have a skype account I don't want a Skype account. They force you to have a Skype account. Okay, I have other methods of communicating with people <laughs> with video. Okay, don't want a Skype, but they force you to get a Skype account. They force you to get certain things. Um, and when you're, if you're utilizing, you know, let's call it a Facebook, you're utilizing that, and now you're utilizing stuff for the office and everything. Okay, it becomes a question of how much do you care about your company how safe do you want your company to be okay security at the forefront and, and i stand by that and you gotta you have to look at that stuff uh when you're looking at at companies you're looking at what's going to be happening in the future okay um and yeah you know i think that we're gonna have uh, an interesting um an interesting time as technology starts rolling forward and it starts bringing things that we can't even think about right now 
you know, but I will say if you're looking at companies, look at look for companies that are involved in artificial intelligence. Advanced blockchain is interesting. I'm, I'm not talking about cryptos. I'm talking about advanced blockchain for security. Uh, you look at companies that are involved in, in virtual reality and augmented reality. These are going to be important in robotics. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is that Augmented reality can be used to create learning platforms. Robotics will be used and is used right now for a number of things. Okay, as smart cities start rolling out, we're going to see more of that in the home. We're going to see more of that all over the place. So these are the things you want to look out uh, for um, as as we do, uh, as, as I bring you Money Never Sleeps uh, a little more often now. Uh, I think that we're going to have... Uh, a lot of uh, companies come to the forefront. I, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to going to try to bring on some guests so they can give some input. I think that would be interesting for the Money Never Sleeps uh, listeners, um, for me to bring on a few guests in certain areas to go and give you some input. Okay, you know, on Money Never Sleeps, we talk about everything and anything that impacts the flow of money from the round, from around the corner to around the world. It doesn't matter, matter whether it's a public company, a private company, or what they do. If it's going to impact how things move, it's going to impact it, and I, we, we want to speak about it. Okay, and uh, the next show, I'm going to get in, into logistics. I mean, that's going to be interesting. And, uh, yeah, you're saying, well... That, that's you know that's that's all that's all well and good, but it's boring. But not not when I bring it to you. <laughs> you know, there's going to be stuff that we're gonna that I'm gonna I'm gonna speak about that may you know get you thinking. You know, sometimes boring subjects become the most profitable at the end of the day. All right. Anyway, that's about it for this uh, edition of Money Never Sleeps Radio. I'll be back with you um, on Monday or Tuesday, and uh, we're gonna get back into it. And I'm gonna start. Bring, I'm, so I'm gonna start bringing the show the show to you more frequently because uh, I think it's about that time. Okay. Anyway, you guys enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, I'll be back with you soon enough. Enjoy. Take care. Initiating shutdown sequence. You're listening to UCW Radio in your face. What is your major malfunction? So let it be written. So let it be done. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you. All opinions expressed by Louis Velasquez on the Money Never Sleeps radio show and its website are solely his opinions and do not reflect the opinions of the UCW radio show or their parent company or affiliates and may have been previously disseminated by him on television, radio, internet, or another medium. You should not treat any opinion expressed by him as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of his opinion. His opinions are based upon information he considers to be reliable, but neither the UCW radio show nor its affiliates, parent companies, and or subsidiaries warrant its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. The UCW radio show, Louis Velasquez, its affiliates, parent companies, and or subsidiaries are not under any obligation to update or correct any information provided on the radio show or on the website. His statements and opinions are subject to change without notice. No part of his compensation from the UCW radio show is related to the specific opinions he expresses. Please read the full disclaimer on moneyneversleepsradio.com.